Hi, Jamie. <laughs> hi, Lisa. Hi, Eric. Eric says hi. He's excited. I know, because you know what we're going to talk about. Go ahead and fill us in. What are we going to talk about, Eric? Possessions. Yes. And, and hauntings. Yes. Nasty stuff like that. So a lot of people wonder, are there these shadows? What are shadows? <laughs> shadows, dark energies that follow someone and prevent them from succeeding. That's what a blog member wrote. Eric was teasing you. Go, yes, mother, there is shadows. When the sun comes out, it casts a shadow oh, my behind God. an object. Yeah, I know. I would um, talk. You used to try to catch your shadow and jump on it when you were little. So we could talk all day about shadows. When he's you were like, I kid. was like a baby kitten. I know. You're still my baby kitten. Yeah, as a big baby kitten. Yeah. He'd love to talk about the shadows. And of yes, course. they are real. He said they are entities, mm -hmm. spirits. Okay. Who. Okay, he's backtracking. Let's say you're a very warped individual. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he laughs. He goes, I'd put myself in that category. Okay. <laughs> he goes, but no, really warped, right? And like, um, you what do you mean? Know, like what? Warped. Uh, let's say you were a murderer. Oh, that's pretty warped. You know, yeah. Kind of like to de skin people. Oh, yeah, that's pretty warped. Okay. Okay, that's good, right? We, mm -hmm. we got an image. Okay. God. Some image. And this person dies suddenly. Whether they took their own lives, whether they get hit by a car, whether, you know, just whatever. They, yeah. But they died suddenly. They don't have a belief in an afterlife. Therefore, an afterlife is not going to arrive to them because their belief system shapes the way that they cross over into other dimensions. Okay. All right. So they stay put and they stay in their place because that's what they're in control over. That was their obsession when they were alive. Mm -hmm. Or let's say they were at war or, you know, whatever. Yeah. So they stay in that place because that's what they're familiar with. Therefore, they don't transition. So now we have a spirit inside of a person that turned into a soul but didn't cross over. Or no, a soul inside of a person. Mm -hmm. Love that, Eric. <clears throat> Soul inside of a person that turned into a spirit that didn't cross over, so now we kind of technically call them a ghost, right? So is that what the ghost is, the difference between a ghost and a spirit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A ghost is a spirit who doesn't cross over into other dimensional planes. They stay okay. in our human dimensional planes. Got it. Got it. Great. And he said, so we have the ghost, and the ghost has decided they want to continue to be their warped, fucked up selves that they were when they were alive. Mm -hmm. So maybe they're still always on the hunt. Or they're always trying to kill themselves. Maybe that's what they really liked when they were alive. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're always trying to, you know, capture other people because that was their obsession. Mm. Whatever. They liked little boys or, you know, old men. Whatever it is. That's what they'll continue to do. Mm -hmm. And because they have such a dense, lower energetic vibration, they kind of line up with being human. Because our human energy, our bodies, our skin, everything like that requires us to be very dense to stay put. So a lower vibrational, technique. like a lower vibrational frequency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's kind of special to us humans, but now we have this ghost who kind of has it as well. Okay. And so they're able to kind of cross our, let's say, timely path and create a chaos. Mm -hmm. Or let's say... The guy who was obsessed with knives, killed a bunch of animals, killed whatever came across, killed himself, and then this new family moved into the house, and he sees the, the, the man at the house as being kind of an equal to him and kind of likes the way he does things. So he starts to merge into this person's energy mm. very slowly, first allowing the dude to feel good and confident and in control about things, kind of matching energetic vibration so that you can kind of attach or, or move in with, with ease. So there wouldn't be this kind of like something's on me feeling. It wouldn't yeah. be like something's not right. You would just feel really good. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And then once the trust is earned, then you kind of, then the, the possession becomes what they really want to be, which is holding knives. Oh. Hoarding things that could harm people, being angry, shouting, 
taking control. Oh, that's and awful. The human person is like, you know, I feel like I'm losing my fucking mind. I'm, I'm not myself anymore. You know, and they get blood work done. They get all this shit done. They're like, but you're fine, mister. Nothing's wrong with you. You know, maybe you got mental and then you get on pills and then you get addicted oh. to alcohol and then all this happens because they can't manage themselves because they got this hitchhiker dude that's all fucked up. And is using this person's energy. So a lot of possessions happen around the time of menopause. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, but how do you get rid of them? What, 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 well, first of all, are there certain people that tend to attract possessions more? Yeah. And those are the people who lack boundaries. Mm. Uh, normally, they're people who lack self-worth and confidence. Mm. And they're always open to receiving from other people. Hey, can you give me something that make me feel better? You know, will you like me, please? Will you like me, please? And that just opens it up just not to other people, but also to ghosts and spirits, things like that. Mm. Okay. I do certain things like negative emotions, depression and and, you know, alcoholism all that does that also attract well depression everything that you just listed mom shows up because of that kind of lack of worth lack of boundaries lack of understanding of self true so yes so what do you do do you you use exorcism no you just do most of the time mom people who are even that depressed and that not feeling well know that they aren't right okay you know and most of the time it is a motivator to set boundaries, to cleanse themselves, and they do it all on their own. They're like, fucking stop this shit right now. You know, they yell at themselves and mm-hmm. they tear at themselves and they really just set themselves straight. Mm-hmm. They don't need, like, but not all the time. Whoever. Right, but not all the time. Because sometimes they go so far, they don't even recognize who they are anymore. Yeah. It's just who they are. They've just yeah. lost themselves. And normally what happens is a family or a close friend says, listen, you know, we don't know what else to do. We've done psychotherapy. We've done drugs. We've done everything. Let's get the priest in. And, you know, we have an energetic healer and they comb through and they see that maybe there's not just one possession. There's two or three that are feeding off this human's energy and they kind of pull them apart. It's like taking apart a sandwich, you know, the bread and the ham, the cheese mm-hmm. and everything. And they pull them all apart. And then protect the human to where they can't come back in. And they teach the human how to set the boundaries and take care of their energetic body, which is what we should fucking be teaching our children. All I know. Time. Not just to pay attention to the goddamn skin that we have, but also to the energetic layers that are around us. Sing it, brother. Sing it. That's good. Well, so what do we tell people out there who, are, who think that they do have some sort of dark energy? ghost or what have you in their house maybe it's not possessing them maybe it is but what do we tell them find a stable person who can help them because um the reason i just won't throw out is find somebody who works with energy and spirits is because there's so many people out there who'll go oh i'll take your money and now that's a thousand dollars i know another five hundred dollars to come back and make sure it's clear and then i want 250 dollars every other week to make sure and he's like, this kind of feed me money to take care of you energetically? No. Find somebody who, yeah, they might charge. They come, you pay them 500 bucks. They clean the house. They clean you, and they teach you how to do it. And then they're available to you, you know, as a, a mentor, you know, kind of without cost. They make sure that you're owning it and that you can take care of it. We don't need to create a world where everybody's sucking on somebody else's tit because they can't do it themselves. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, can we do so? There's certain things, surely, that we can do ourselves, right? Yes. Yes. And we are all able and capable of taking care of our own energy and protecting our energy. You don't have to have a certain belief system. You don't have to have a certain power. You don't have to have a certain ability. It is naturally our ability to be able to take care of that energetic body. Okay. So, what things can we do around the house if we think we have? evil spirits so that I mean because not all of us can afford to hire somebody and some I, I wouldn't even know where to begin to look it's probably not on the yellow pages is it that's right it's not going to be in the yellow pages no. you know it's, it's going to be a special Yelp. find and on Yelp. Usually, yeah, <laughs> by word of mouth you can usually find somebody that's extremely reputable and that's kind and understands the situation and takes it seriously someone who's okay. grounded all right um he was teasing before, what can you do if you don't have money? He was talking about lighting a fire and 
dancing around it and chanting. Well, whatever works, man. He goes, well, it'd be a lot of slaughtering fun. A pig in the slaughtering a pig in the middle of the living room. I might do it. Oh, my God. He goes, okay, so if you don't have the means, mm -hmm. the hardware, you have to sit down with yourself and really describe what are your needs? What do you need to happen? You know, and, and how are you feeling about it? And what kind of, you know, respect are you requiring? Then um, you have to look at where are the holes. Like, um, let's say you do all this work, and at the end of it, you go, I don't know, it's probably fucking bullshit. Well, then guess what? It's all bullshit, and you just ruined everything that you just did. So if you're going to do it, you got to commit to it, and you got to believe in it. Mm -hmm. So I think that you need to sit down with yourself beforehand <clears throat> and write out what you need to happen for yourself, your energetic body, and your home and its mm -hmm. energetic body. And then write down where your holes are and how you're going to get around those. Okay. So I like visuals a lot. So if you can imagine your words paint a picture or just have a certain color to it and you create this statement, you can call it a prayer, you can call it an affirmation, an intent, call it whatever, call it whatever, God. Uh oh. Yeah, the cuss words are in there. Call it whatever you want. Okay, I know. I gotta practice muting those things I know. when we're on the radio. I, I know made it's some hard. Mistakes last time. <laughs> cuss words. Okay, then um, once you have that visual attached to the words, that when you say the words, you can see like the visual show up around the windows and the doors and everything. And if you like the idea of a vacuum, then you don't feel like you're a good visualizer. Fucking go get your vacuum, man. Stand in the middle of the room and just say, turn your vacuum on and just say, all right, I call upon, and you call whoever, like your angels, God, Judah, Buddha, Huda. This is rhyming now. <laughs> this is rhyming. <laughs> to come forward to help protect you and then pull in all the energy and spirits and everything that are attached to the house that, you know, that do bad shit that you don't want anymore. And then say it again and again and again and let it run. And then just take your vacuum bag close it up, take it outside, put it in the garbage, and take it off your property. He goes, that gives you a really good visual. It gets you very, very focused. You get very much into your words. Yeah, if somebody's watching you, we're probably going to fucking laugh our asses off that you just used a vacuum cleaner to suck energy out of your house. But it is an instrument and is a tool. You can use it however you see fit. Sure, and your house, you, you know, do your housekeeping at the same time. <laughs> do it at the Who same time. those energies? That's, um... I like that because I, I often tell people, Jamie, I often tell people that when they dust to think about collecting the energy that's around oh. the house as well. Because then it's Good. kind of a two in one thing. But yeah. I've never heard of the vacuum cleaner and the I know, that's of the pretty house I like that thing. one. I like that one. <laughs> he just he says, I like things that are a good, clean visual because if you're lacking faith inside of yourself, I mean rely yeah. on a strong visual to make it solid. And you want to protect your windows and your doors your ceiling, the floors, and all the walls. What well, this energy? Isn't there things like smudging with sage? You know. Um. Yes, you can smudge with sage. You can. Which means just lighting sage on fire. I mean, lighting it, and then it smokes, and you set off all your smoke detect detectors. <laughs> he said it shouldn't set off your smoke detector. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but good. you walk around your house. And he goes, you go. Uh, start at your front door. Mm -hmm. He's trying to pass the buck on me, and I'm like, no, no, no. Will you describe how it's done? Um, start at the front door, go up the stairs, clockwise on the top floor, clockwise on any other floor. And then you, if you have a basement, clockwise, bring it up. And then do the ground floor, and then you can push it out the back door and push off your property. Good. Way off. Just, just have some kind of rhythm and, and concept of where you're collecting it, where you're gathering it, and how you're going to recycle it, and how you're going to keep it off your property as well. Put it in your neighbor's house. yard. Because <laughs> if you're giving it to the earth, she's a really good recycler. That's right. And that's nice. That's right. And then make some kind of statement that spirits aren't allowed to come back in unless they're invited. They can't piggyback on anybody coming through the doors. And will you know, they, they do can't that? Sneak in. Well, will they just like if you just say, "Hey, I don't want you here. Get out." Do they mind? They don't mind, but they're going to listen because those words 
are also creating an energetic ah. um, vibration. So you ah. can see it, it creates like a, a filter. Oh. So if you say, and in the human world, it doesn't do that because we're not that sensitive, right? Mm. We yell and we say, I don't want you in here anymore. To us, it's just a word. And we stand yeah. there and go, screw you. you. Yeah, yeah, I'm staying. <laughs> you gonna make yeah. me leave? But energy is not like that. Energy is more huh. flexible and malleable. So if you're making the statement and you absolutely believe in it, then that is what's occurring. Okay. Now, what if somebody scared? I've had a blog member so scared at night, she felt like there was some demon in her room. Can We could, of course, say, get the hell out. But is there some way we can protect ourselves, like with a golden bubble or any, any visualization? Or what? Yeah, so you can clean the house like we talked about, clean the property. Uh -huh. right. And then you can protect but at that moment, energy. Right at that moment when she's scared, really scared. <laughs> He's laughing. He goes, wait a second. I thought hiding under the sheets was the thing to do. I know. God, they can't get through sheets, can they? You know, oh. I had this thing about vampire movies when I was a little kid. So now I, ca I have to have my sheets all over, up around my neck. Like those are really going to, the things can't go through that little, you know, 300 count, whatever, cotton sheet. There's no way. <laughs> that is awesome. Yes, they go through sheets. Yeah. The bubble of white light is great. Um, knowing that you have the right to demand that they leave, mm -hmm. that you understand you're more powerful than them. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as you start to have fear, fear pokes a hole in a lot of your energy. That's yeah. a good visual to have. It kind of, it makes your energy wishy-washy and it gets manipulated easier because then they gain power and they gain power because you're afraid. Yeah. And so you have to calm your heart rate, get in control over yourself. Know that you're powerful. Protect yourself with a white light. It's not about creating harm to what's scaring you. Because mm. actually, it might be a loved one, but it's your first interaction yeah. like this. You're so fucking scared, you don't even know what to do, so you immediately yeah. think, that's something bad, man. It's something bad. Yeah. So you close shop. Mm. So when you're doing this, it's not about causing harm or judging the situation. It's protecting you and demanding that they get away from you because they're not abiding by your set of boundaries or rules okay. that creates comfort for you. So set your boundaries. What about poltergeists? Is there something special about them? What are those? The ghosts that hunt? Poltergeists, are, are they the ones that sort of just create all sorts of trouble like open cabinets and, and make the dishes fly out or just weird stuff like that? He says the, the ghosts that hunt. That's it. They're just haunting. They're just ghosts that hang around the house without paying rent. Without paying rent and it's destroying right. stuff. Right. A lot of times, this is pure fun. Woo! Okay. So they just want to have fun. A lot of times, it's out of confusion. Oh. That they're back in their house, but. Shit's all rearranged because somebody new lives in it. And so they're, what the fuck is this couch doing here? Yeah. What the, you know, and so they're doing that. Mm -hmm. And then other times they're doing it to spook, to scare, to get the people to leave so they have the place on their own. Okay. What about bad aliens? Do they come and haunt us and do the same things that demons and... So aliens have bodies. They're not really seen as spirit. But they can cross dimensional planes, mm -hmm. which we have to rely on being dead to do that. But they can do that in their bodies. So they're not really haunting us. They're just showing up in our dimensional plane. Okay. Pretty creepy. I just watched Area 51, this movie. It was so scary. Ooh, I get scared easily, though. Um, all right. So is there anybody in the spirit, spiritual realm that helps protect us, you know, Little earthlings, innocent, vulnerable Protect earthlings. Protect us while we're being from, from these possessed and haunted yeah. and crap like that. Or is it just up to us? <clears throat> it's more or less up to us. They can yeah. help us to some extent. They can strengthen the energy that we create or the boundaries or the words that we create. They can strengthen it. Mm -hmm. But they're not crossing dimensional planes to fight our battles. Okay. Yes. Yeah. It's us. We're responsible for ourselves. You know, we don't have like 
cops and robbers kind of a thing set no. up over here, where the cops Too come bad. in and go, hey, hey, now, break it up, break it yeah. up. <laughs> but, but one more question. Demons, they are the same as these evil entities, right? And there's nothing, yeah. a demon is not some other special type of category. No, but we do often, humans, do often see demons as shaped differently, different visual features of, you know, animal-like claws, yeah. rotten smells, things oh. of that nature. And we, they do that in a, in a way to draw out more fear. Okay. It, it's almost like, because, you know, when you're in spirit, mom, we can present ourselves however the fuck we want. I can look like a baby kitten to you. Mm. It's, I don't, I wouldn't necessarily be a baby kitten physically. I would still be Eric. Uh huh. But I could appear to be a baby kitten. Okay. So if I'm really trying to fuck with someone, you know, I can look at what they're afraid of and I can present that. Okay. And if over the years I've been haunting this house and people make up all these stories and I'm hearing all these stories, and I'm like, oh shit, that sounds good. Yeah. I got a fiery eyes and, you know, all this crap. Then we feed off of that. Yeah, you energy. get stronger with the, with negative energy, right? Energy feeds off that fear and those stories and that attention. And so often we kind of grow into that image to create more fear out of the person because they say, oh, my God, it's real. Okay. Right? And then, boom, makes it bigger. I, I would think that. If somebody is depressed or having these negative emotions, that just going to a life coach, a therapist, and getting help would be a good way to get rid of some of these negative entities. But that's all I have to say. And we are finished with this particular session, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Out, out, out. Out, 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 out. He goes, we're out of here. Out, 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 out. Well, I'm going to talk to you in a minute, baby, because we're going to talk about right and wrong and other things for our last video for today. You guys, I will put information about Jamie and about Channeling Eric Yay. and other little reminders. Don't Down forget there. that, right, the excerpts uh, for his new book is in the description box. Read them. You will love it. Yay. Okay. Bye, Eric everybody. Says thank you. Bye. Bye, Eric. I love you. Bye. Bye.